Infrared Photography and Infrared Camera Conversion Guide There are a few ways to make the camera see infrared. The simplest way is just to take an infrared filter and place it on the lens, go outside with a tripod and start taking long exposure pictures. However, this method is inconvenient, and it will make moving objects blurred. So we will do camera conversion. Basically, there are two types of infrared camera conversion, permanent infrared and full spectrum. Permanent infrared is handy when we do not have infrared filters or adapters for each lens. It also allows us to see the subject through the viewfinder on a DSLR camera. Full spectrum conversion facilitates us to try out new ideas and new filters. Perhaps, one day I want to shoot with a 590 nanometers filter, and another day I want deep black with a 950 nanometers filter. We need then to buy infrared filters that fit our lens. In all those two types the filter that blocks UV and IR light will be removed from the sensor. Different cameras have a different number of those filters. Canon DSLRs and mirrorless cameras usually have two filters. Sony mirrorless cameras have one thick filter. Fujifilm compact cameras have one filter, and Fujifilm mirrorless cameras have two filters. New cameras have an ultrasonic sensor cleaning system. Some cameras like Canon 60D have very clever firmware and detects that this is not the original glass. It usually gives error 70. Disabling the automatic sensor cleaning system, in this case, makes the camera work properly again. Infrared filters. Some cameras are used for astrophotography. Those have a special filter fitted that passes hydrogen alpha light. There are a few infrared filters. The most well-known is the 720 nanometers filter, often referred to as standard infrared. It gives a slight grayish image straight from the camera. Then there is the 590 nanometers, which is also referred to as goldie. Photos were taken using this filter usually will have a golden sky. 850 nanometers infrared filter will give black and white image if custom balance is set to white paper or a gray card. Isn't that incredible? The black and white images from a camera using just a custom white balance. 950 nanometers infrared filters in photography are referred to as deep black or X-ray. The pictures will have a very surreal feeling. Many filters fall between these main wavelengths. Something like 680 nanometers will give more color in the image. To take these pictures and have them exposed correctly with no overwhelming red color a custom white balance should be used, and it should be set to something white or gray. Converted camera calibration. Mirrorless cameras rarely require sensor calibration. They only require sensor leveling. For example, Canon EOS M will require sensor leveling. DSLR cameras require sensor calibration and some require sensor leveling. The calibration is performed moving the sensor to the back, in example 0.5 mm. Sensor leveling requires a special jig to measure the distance from chassis to the sensor. Sometimes in less light conditions is difficult to focus with the infrared converted mirrorless camera. Converted DSLR cameras are avoiding this as they use a dedicated focusing sensor, which is not affected by the conversion. What are those dots in infrared images? Usually, these dots are not dissolved pigment that became a round lump. It also can be a bubble, which is on the inside of the filter. However, the bubbles rarely show up in the image. This also can be dust particles or hair pieces. They usually are not that noticeable as filter defects. Wide open aperture makes these dots go away. Although some cameras do not have a manual override in movie mode, so depending on lighting conditions and aperture number those defects would be visible to some extent. Conversion difficulty. Difficult to convert is Sony mirrorless cameras, Fujifilm mirrorless cameras easy to convert as Canon DSLRs and most compact cameras that are over 10 megapixels in resolution. Infrared camera calibration. Calibration in infrared camera conversions is very important. The infrared converted camera must focus the infrared light. Infrared light bends a bit different from visible light so we need to adjust camera's focusing system. Compact cameras and compact system cameras Fujifilm S2980, Canon EOS M, EOS M3 usually do not require recalibration but some models require sensor leveling. The sensor leveling is needed to achieve even focus throughout the entire image. 
If the sensor is not leveled properly, the image will not have an even focus plane. Basically, this not always will be noticeable and probably will show itself if we take a picture of a flat surface in example a wall. If the compact camera or compact system camera can't focus we move the sensor to the back. Usually, a 0.5 mm distance is enough. DSLRs require recalibration a sensor shift, and some DSLRs also require sensor leveling. For example, the IR-converted Canon 1200D will require a sensor shift to the back 0.5 mm and sensor leveling. The Canon 1100D will not require sensor leveling because the sensor is not fitted on springs and will need only sensor shift to the back done with 0.5 mm washers. How sensor shifting is done. For sensors that are fitted on springs, we simply increase sensor distance from the chassis for about 0.5 mm. For sensors that are without a spring fitting, we use simple washers or shims 0.5 mm. This sensor shift will allow us to use any lens on 50 mm focal length with the quick focus feature. What about full spectrum conversions? Full spectrum conversions do not require focus recalibration on mirror less cameras. It does, however, require sensor leveling on cameras with sensors fitted on springs. If a full spectrum DSLR is used for infrared photography then an infrared filter is placed on the lens and we can't use quick focus because we can't see anything. So live view mode is used and the camera focuses perfectly all the time. Some cameras like the Fujifilm X-Pro require additional clear glass to be fitted in full spectrum conversions because they can't focus otherwise. Some digital compact cameras like Fujifilm S2980 require sensor shift to the front. This can be done adjusting three screws that the sensor is fitted with. If the camera still can't focus we simply remove those springs and the sensor then shifts a bit more to the front and the camera is able to focus. Infrared photography with a DSLR. You probably can get the best quality infrared images from older or new DSLRs. To use a newer DSLR would be much easier because they have live view function which gives perfect focus every time, no guessing. On the other hand, most of the infrared converted DSLRs have been recalibrated to focus correctly on 50mm focal length. Why is that? The answer is that the infrared light behaves a bit different than the visible light. For example, it will focus the image a bit behind the sensor if we use quick focus feature on DSLR, this is the normal DSLR mode. The quick focusing sensor thinks that we use visible light. Though we are using infrared light and the image will be focused a little behind the sensor. What are we going to do? Well, this is simple, we are going to move the sensor a bit 0.5 millimeters to the back. And this will be enough to have the infrared image projected directly on the sensor. Unfortunately, if we change the focal length of the lens from 50 mm to 100 mm, the infrared light will not focus on the sensor again. The answer to these problems is to use live view mode. The mirror goes from the way and it does not project light on the quick focusing sensor. The image is projected straight to the sensor through the infrared filter and the camera focuses using contrast detection of the image from this sensor or on other cameras there is embedded phase detection capability. Phase detection is integrated into the sensor, Canon names it dual pixel focus. There is one way to get around all the problems with infrared light and quick focus sensors. It simply places the same type infrared filter in the front of the quick focus sensor. It is proven to work, we converted one Canon 40D this way. One thing to note with this sort of conversion that the sensor needs then to move slightly to the front. This conversion with two infrared filters is a bit difficult. The difficult part is to fit the small IR filter in the front of the quick sensor. There is not that much space in there. Using infrared converted Fujifilm cameras. Preparing full spectrum, wide spectrum camera to take deep black and white 850 nanometers pictures. Power on the camera. Place an 850 nanometers infrared filter on the lens. Take a gray card. We will use it to set a custom white balance in the camera. Set the dial on top of the camera to the letter P program. Press menu and the down arrow a few times until you see the white balance menu option. Press the right arrow or OK. Use up and down arrows to select custom. 
Fill the white rectangle frame in the view screen with the gray card and take a picture by pressing the shutter button. Press OK to confirm if needed. Now you will be able to take infrared deep black and white images. How to take 590 nanometers, 690 nanometers, 720 nanometers infrared pictures. The procedures are the same. Place a filter in the front of the lens. Set custom white balance to a gray card. Asphalt or something similarly gray works as well. Alternatively, you can set white balance to the grass. This will make grass appear white. Take pictures. For best results with infrared images, take pictures on a sunny day. In addition we will do a channel swap. Please download and install GIMP. Open an image for editing, file, open. Adjust color levels by going to colors, levels. If needed, slide the arrow from right to left to make the image brighter. Swap channels. Go to colors, components, channel mixer. On the red output channel, adjust red to 0% and blue to 100%. Next, select the blue output channel. Set red to 100% and blue to 0%. Further actions vary depending on your taste. For example, you can make the sky blue by adjusting the hue or increasing blue in the channel mixer, etc.